Today we're going to talk about something that is being catching my attention recently and because there are a lot of confusions about all these healthy foods that we find in a supermarket that everyone thinks that are super healthy and every single day that I go to the supermarket I keep on seeing people grabbing and grabbing and grabbing and grabbing these products because we think that are super healthy and really we should be avoiding them at all costs. And the thing is that means that I should never consume them ever, ever, ever. No, maybe once in a while, but knowing, knowing that they aren't healthy. They're the same thing as getting, I don't know, a dessert, getting a beer, getting a glass of whiskey, something like that. It's part of those things that maybe you really enjoy, but you should be eating them maybe less than 10% of your whole diet. Before we continue, I, I just want to ask you a quick and short favor and is we're growing this community as the one we have in Spanish in which we have almost 3, 3 million followers on YouTube in Spanish. We're growing this community and we reached over 100,000 followers because of you guys. So we have here, over here, and thank you so much. But for you to help us, it's very easy. It's just to hit the like button, hit here to subscribe and hit also the bell. So every time that we make new videos, you're gonna be the first one to be notified. The first thing that I want you not to be consuming, it's going to be dehydrated fruit. When we eat dehydrated fruits, what's the problem? When we eat figs or when we eat prunes or when we eat anything at all. The thing is, when fruit dehydrates, it loses all of its water. But on that process, it's going to produce more sugars. So the sugar content that we're going to find in dehydrated food, then if we compare it with the same one, it could be a little bit higher. Eat one, it's probably the same as if you're eating, I don't know, an orange or if you're eating a, a fig on it in its natural way or dehydrated. If you just eat one, it would probably be the same. What's the problem? Most people eat a lot of dehydrated fruits. Why? Because they don't get full because it has no water content at all. And water helps us making it easier for us to feel a little bit fuller. Number two, it's fruit juice. When we destroy the fiber or when we take it away and we leave only the sugars inside of it. What's the deal? When we have glucose and fructose, that it's what we are going to find in fruit juice. Well, those are going to go like a going coming down a slide and getting into our bloodstream and spiking glucose and spiking insulin and it's going to be very very difficult because because we need some glucose for ourselves so every glass of orange juice or tangerine juice that you're drinking has 15 tablespoons of sugar you know how many has a soda 10 and it's a real deal it's a real problem number three is going to be agave syrup. Fructose doesn't give us energy or anything at all. It only goes to the liver and the liver can process it. And if we consume more than what that can, we can process, it's only going to cause inflammation and it's only going to be stored as fat, period. Nothing else. There is a big deal about high fructose corn syrup because it's 45% glucose and 55% fructose. And we think it's a real deal and for sure. It's more fructose that we should be eating and it's of course more than in sugar you want to know in agave how much it is it's 80 percent fructose and just 20 percent glucose why do people think that it's healthy they say it's healthy because it's low glycemic index of course it's low glycemic index because the content of glucose it's low. Number four is all the pastries and all the breads and crackers and everything else that is marketed as gluten-free. If they say that something is gluten-free, it's just that it has no gluten, period. But it can have sugar, sweeteners, colorants, flavors, vegetable oils, and every single other thing that is out there that is highly dangerous for us. If you're going to go for any of these foods that it's just stated as gluten-free, please stop and think twice and look at in the ingredients and check that you're eating something that is actually good for you. Number five is all this light beverages. So we go for these light beverages because they're low in calories and we keep on thinking that everything is just related about calories, that we should be counting calories, cutting calories, making a calorie deficit, and everything else. And again, this is something that might work for some people, some people, not for everyone, some people, and in a very short term, because afterwards your body really knows how to do, 
it shuts down all the production and it's not going to work. What's the problem with all these drinks that are just light or low in calories? Most of the time, they're, they're very high in chemical compounds. Chemical compounds such as sweeteners, colorants, artificial flavors. Number six is margarine. Margarine, even if it says free of cholesterol. And of course it's going to be free of cholesterol. You know why? Because cholesterol only comes from animal sources. But they say that it's better because it's low in saturated fat and it's completely free of cholesterol. Well, low in saturated fat, it, it's funny because they say that saturated fat is bad and saturated fat from real butter is bad. Huh, but is saturated fat from mother's milk bad too? It's exactly the same. Type of saturated fat and the content of saturated fat, it's exactly the same. Number seven is all these processed meats or sausages or burgers, or when they claim that, are, that they are vegetarian or vegan. If you wanna follow a vegetarian or a vegan diet, fine. For whatever reason, if you think that it's better for the planet, fine. If you think that you want to take care of animals, fine. I'm not going to argue that. Not at all. You can think what you want. Perfect. But you want to take care about yourself too. Because most of these meats, sausages, fake burgers or whatever, if you go and check the ingredients, actually make part of most of the ingredients that I'm listing in here and they aren't good for you at all. When you go and see they have cheap soy protein, they have canola, corn, or soybean oil, or any other vegetable oil that really, guys, trust me, they aren't good for us. Sometimes they have some anti-compacting fibers that we really don't know where they come from because they say it's a food fiber, food starch. Food doesn't say even from where. It's just a mixer of whatever, and we really don't know what that is. If you go and check on the ingredients, really, you're going to be notified that these aren't good for us at all. So please try to avoid them. Number eight is most of protein bars. Most of protein bars are energy bars that we consume. When, we, when you go and check on the ingredients, again, same thing, it could say 20 grams of protein. And most people are taking counts on the amount of protein that we should be consuming and bravo. Absolutely, we should be taking into account the amount of protein that we are consuming every single day. Extremely important. But do we really need to be consuming that amount of protein because it's, it's completely important and consume vegetable oils, uh, cake bread flavor with Oreo flavor, with any other artificial flavor? Because artificial sweeteners and artificial textures and artificial chemicals that are part of the antioxidant so it doesn't get rot so it doesn't rotten or any other thing, really? That's what we should be consuming in our diet just because I need more protein in my diet? Or should I go for steak? Or should I go for a chicken breast? Of course, there are some good sources of protein bars, but they're in the less quantity. Before you consume a protein bar, make the exercise of stopping and turn it around and check on the ingredients. Please check on the ingredients. That's where you're going to follow everything else get the nutritional facts and the ingredients. And with the mixture of those two, when you have the knowledge, then you can make good decisions. Number nine is going to be granolas or some of the cereals. The thing is about granolas is that they claim that same thing. Now they're gluten-free, now without sugar. Yeah, it's without sugar, but they have honey. Or they have sorbitol or xylitol or erythritol or any other of those. And the thing is we get confused, but most of the time granolas what they are is pretty much the same as the cereals from these guys. When we when we see these guys' cereals, well, we know what, what they're up to. We know that they have a lot of sugar on it. That's why they're super healthy. But the thing is, please remember that these guys, they can claim that they have fruit, but they don't have fruit at all, right? But the thing is, when we go and see granolas, most of the time we think they're healthy. Same thing. Please stop. Check on the ingredients, but check also on the nutrition facts. Because they can tell you on the nutrition facts that they only have, I don't know, uh, three grams of sugar per serving. Check on what's the amount on a serving. Because if they say that it's three grams of sugar per tablespoon, that means that every tablespoon that you're putting in your mouth of that granola has almost one tablespoon of sugar. You're like, where? Well, it's stuck in the granola. 
as the same thing as you would see in, I don't know, in honey or something else. Number 10 is going to be the low fat yogurts. Most of the people still think on calories. So they think that we should be eating low fat because fat has a lot of calories. They have nine gram, nine calories per gram, and we should be running from calories and blah, blah, blah. Same thing over and over. We don't need to be keeping track only about calories. We need to know that food has a calorie content, period, right? But we should be consuming right amount of fats, right amount of carbohydrates, good types of carbohydrates, and the right amount of protein. But the thing is, when we consume these uh, low-fat yogurts, we don't know what the hell we're consuming. We don't know that most of the time we're consuming processed dairy with artificial flavors, artificial sweeteners, artificial everything. Sometimes they say they have fruit and we don't even know if it's the fruit that we are buying it from. You're like, what do you mean? Yeah, well, sometimes they say it's peach flavor, but what it has inside, it's not peach. It could be pumpkins. And you go, well, what's the problem? Well, maybe there's no problem. They're just making us think that it has something when it doesn't. But it could be because it's saying that it contains fruit. Number 11 are these sport drinks. Ah, my God, th that's a real topic. The thing is, they sponsor teams there. They sponsor uh, scientific communities, sports, medical communities all over the world. And they say, well, when you are training, you need water, you need glucose as a part of energy, and you need electrolytes. Uh, well, yeah, it depends. Most of the people need water and electrolytes. If you're training for more than, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours, maybe you start needing glucose, because otherwise you have plenty in your muscles and in your liver, plenty. But really, do you need to be consuming 30 something grams of sugar? I mean, glucose and fructose, sugar, not glucose sugar if you're training at the gym or my kid that is five years old after playing soccer 35 grams of sugar and when you go and check the sports drinks they have a lot of sugar more than what you actually need they have a very low content of electrolytes which is what you really need and they also have something and it's artificial flavors artificial colors Number 12, are there sugar alcohols? Sugar alcohols like xylitol, like sorbitol, like erythritol. And what's the deal with them? People think that th there is, I mean, w when you go and check, people are only thinking about that they're natural, that they don't spike glucose because they don't have glucose at all. And they're probably the, the caloric content is probably zero. So let's say it's zero and that's it. But the thing is, sugar alcohols can spike uric acid. You see, if I have a sugar alcohol once on a, I don't know, bubble gum that I'm eating that it has no sugar, but it has xylitol, is it going to spike my uric acid? Probably not. But if you think that you can consume xylitol or erythritol or any other every single day because it's natural, it doesn't have calories and it doesn't have glucose, so I can eat it every single day to sweeten my tea, my coffee and everything else, that's when you get a problem. And number 13, it's very controversial, but I don't. I think that artificial sweeteners mm, aren't the thing that we should be consuming at all. Why? I agree completely that if we want to sweeten something, we should be looking for something that has no calories, no glucose, no fructose. When we want to sweeten something, we have two choices. We can go for natural stuff or artificial stuff. And the thing is, by the fact that they don't have calories, they don't have sugar, they don't give any glucose by whatever. Again, we have two choices. Natural things like long fruit, like, like stevia, or we could go for these aspartame, sucralose. So again, guys, these are the things that are really a uh, thing that we, shouldn't be that, that we shouldn't be consuming. These things aren't healthy at all. If you think there's another one, please leave it here in the comments so we can maybe make another video. Maybe we can make part two of this. And please remember, before you leave, please remember to hit the like button. And please remember also to subscribe to the channel and to hit the bell. So every time we make new videos, you're going to be the first one to be notified. Thank you. And until next time. Fructose doesn't give us energy or anything. I, no, I hate.